The film begins with a young man named Akira Omi, admired by the girls at his school. They gather by the edge of the field as Omi plays in a tennis match, cheering him on with excitement. At the same time, a girl named Eli Ichimura watches Omi from afar. Seeing him look so strong and handsome on the tennis court, Ellie writes a post on her social media, calling Omi her boyfriend. Ellie often claims to be dating Omi, even though in reality, Omi, the most popular student at her school, doesn't know her at all and has never noticed her presence. As Omi walks through the school corridor, surrounded by admirers, he briefly glances in Ellie's direction as she stands by her classroom. Approaching her, he only grabs a pamphlet she's holding, then walks away. Still, the close encounter makes Ellie's heart race as Omi was near her. Shortly after, Ellie pulls out her phone to type up this thrilling experience, posting it on her secret social media account under the name Lovesick Ellie. Although her relationship with Omi is purely fantasy, Ellie finds joy in writing about it and sharing it online. She knows she may never experience real love, so she uses her imagination to find happiness by admiring a handsome guy who fits her type. However, Ellie tries to keep her imagination separate from reality, especially since she doesn't know Omi's true personality that he always appears kind to the girls who admire him. As Ellie is about to return to her class, she suddenly hears Omi's voice coming from a nearby room. Peeking inside, she sees Omi throwing away a handmade cake gifted by one of his admirers. Nearby, a teacher named Mr. Shioto advises Omi not to discard gifts from others. Seeing this, Ellie is shocked, as she never expected Omi to have such a dark side. But just then, the door in front of her suddenly falls, revealing Ellie's presence to Omi and Mr. Shioto. Embarrassed and flustered at being caught spying, Ellie rushes away in a hurry, unaware that she has left her phone behind. Omi then picks up her phone and appears to discover something inside it. When Ellie returns to class, she is startled to see Omi approaching her, holding her phone, it turns out that Omi has read her fantasies about him posted on her lovesick Ellie account. Instead of being angry, Omi teases Ellie, suggesting he could make her fantasies come true if she keeps quiet about what she just witnessed. Omi even leans in, attempting to kiss her. However, Ellie pushes him away, feeling deeply embarrassed being so close to him. When Ellie finally agrees to let Omi kiss her, he laughs, quickly loses interest, and walks away. Before leaving, Omi asks Ellie once more to keep his true nature a secret, saying he trusts her. After Omi leaves, Ellie feels a burst of happiness, thrilled that she has finally seen herself reflected in Omi's eyes, a miracle for her. Since that day, Ellie's admiration for Omi starts to fade, and she no longer murmurs about her fantasies. Even so, Ellie continues to write her fantasies about Omi on social media, only now with a different approach. As she heads out of class, she accidentally bumps into a girl carrying Omi's jersey. Realizing Ellie has seen the jersey, the girl quickly rushes off. Soon after, Ellie plans to meet Mr. Shioda in his office, but she finds Omi there, relaxing with a cup of coffee. Omi reveals that Mr. Shioda is his uncle and the only person at school who knows his true nature. Ellie then pleads with Omi to keep her fantasies and lovesick Ellie account a secret. Although Omi tells her there's no need to hide it, he agrees to keep it confidential. Ellie then mentions the girl with his jersey. Hearing this, Omi appears unbothered, as this sort of thing happens quite often. Ellie is taken aback and explains to Omi that the girls might do anything with his jersey. They might smell it, wear it, or even put it on a mannequin to hug it. For this reason, Ellie suggests he ask the girl to return his jersey. However, Omi refuses not wanting to get involved with the girls who idolize him. Though he's always surrounded by admirers, Omi seems to prefer keeping his distance. When Ellie comments on this, Omi appears irritated, firmly stating that he doesn't want to hear from someone who finds satisfaction in her fantasies like Ellie. Hearing this, Ellie quickly realizes her mistake and apologizes to Omi. Back in class, Mr. Shioda approaches Ellie, asking her to review a book for the school magazine's upcoming issue. Ellie is surprised by the request, but Mr. Shioda explains that Omi had mentioned her writing skills. Apparently, Omi was impressed with her writing on the lovesick Ellie account and had shared this with Mr. Shioda. Learning this, Ellie suddenly leaves Mr. Shioda and hurries to find the girl holding Omi's jersey. When she finds her, 
Ellie admits that she feels envious of the girl for having the courage to take Omi's jersey, unlike her, who can only fantasize about him. Unbeknownst to Ellie, Omi has been secretly following her and overhears her words about him. Ellie then asks the girl to return Omi's jersey, explaining that stealing is a crime no matter the reason. However, the girl refuses and quickly walks away. Ellie hurries after her to the stairs, but, unexpectedly, trips on her own shoelace and tumbles down the stairs. Fortunately, Omi arrives just in time to catch Ellie. Seeing Ellie unintentionally in Omi's embrace, the girl orders her to step away from him. Ellie quickly apologizes, thinking the girl is angry at her for hugging Omi. Unexpectedly, the girl instead shows concern for Ellie and asks if she is hurt. She then returns the jersey to Omi and clarifies that she is not one of his fans. She explains that she only borrowed the jersey as a size reference for sewing clothes because Omi has an ideal physique. As it turns out, this girl also has her own unique fantasies about her ideal man. She dreams of becoming a fashion designer and imagines creating various outfits for her ideal man to wear. Ellie is impressed by this while Omi thinks Ellie and the girl share some amusing similarities. Soon after, Omi says he wants to reward Ellie for helping him retrieve his jersey. He offers to become her beloved Omi as she portrays him on her lovesick Ellie account. But Ellie declines, explaining that she prefers Omi to be himself, the person she met in Mr. Shiota's office. Hearing this, Omi places his jersey over Ellie's head, covering her face, and gently kisses her forehead. Shortly afterward, Omi asks Ellie if she wants to go on a date with him. However, Ellie, too stunned by the question, doesn't answer in time, and Omi says her time has run out. He then takes his jersey back and walks away, leaving Ellie thrilled as she got to breathe in Omi's scent from his jersey, even if just for a moment. In the following days, Ellie becomes friends with Sarah, the girl who had borrowed Omi's jersey a few days earlier. Not only with Sarah, but Ellie also befriends Leo, Sarah's childhood friend, who is also their upperclassman. At that moment, Ellie tells Sarah about Omi asking her on a date, but Sarah believes Omi is just playing with Ellie's feelings, as she thinks Omi is a playboy. At the same time, Leo suggests that Omi might actually be serious about it, as a man would not ask a woman out if he didn't genuinely like her. As Ellie is about to leave school, Omi suddenly pulls her aside behind the shoe lockers, inviting her to walk home together. However, Ellie has to decline because she accepted someone's request to take over a task for the beautification committee. Hearing this, Omi immediately realizes Ellie felt obligated to accept, so he suggests they walk home together the next day. Ellie, thinking Omi might just be toying with her, then says she already promised to walk home with Sarah. Disappointed by Ellie's refusal, Omi walks away. Seeing Omi looking downcast, Ellie quickly apologizes, but Omi simply calls her silly. Soon after, Ellie joins an activity to plant flowers, beautifying the school grounds. During the event, she drifts off into her thoughts, imagining romantic moments between herself and Omi. The next day, Ellie is seen rushing through tasks in Mr. Shiota's office, eager to finish in time to walk home with Omi. During this time, Mr. Shiota mentions the upcoming sports tournament, and Omi shares that he will be playing tennis. Upon hearing this, Ellie is thrilled at the thought of watching Omi play tennis and begins to fantasize about him. Omi quickly catches on that Ellie is lost in thoughts about him, though she denies it. Omi then prepares to leave, leaving Ellie looking disappointed that they won't be walking home together. The day of the sports tournament finally arrives. Ellie participates in a table tennis match and successfully advances to the finals. On the sidelines, Sarah cheers her on excitedly and informs Ellie that Omi has also made it to the finals in tennis. Meanwhile, as Omi prepares for his final match, he overhears some people speaking negatively about him. It turns out some members of the tennis club feel jealous of Omi's talent, claiming he easily wins because of his natural ability. This leaves Omi feeling saddened and disappointed, prompting him to leave the area. On the tennis court sidelines, Ellie eagerly awaits watching Omi play. She has even prepared a gift for him, a towel with a special embroidery she sewed herself. But soon after, a girl announces to the others that Omi has withdrawn from the final due to an injury. The girls decide to visit him in the school clinic, only to find he isn't there. Hearing this, 
Ellie rushes to Mr. Shiota's office and finds Omi resting on the sofa. Ellie then covers Omi with a towel and starts to leave. However, she accidentally drops her pencil case, making a noise that wakes Omi. Thinking Omi is injured, Ellie suggests he go to the clinic, but Omi declines, revealing he isn't hurt at all. Omi explains that he used the injury as an excuse to withdraw from the final. He adds that no one would care if he didn't participate in the final match anyway. But Ellie disagrees, saying that the girls care deeply for him and are very worried. Omi responds that they're only caught up in the moment and that even without him, they'd just go after another guy. Omi then asks Ellie to leave him alone, but Ellie snaps at him, calling him a spoiled, childish brat. After Ellie leaves, Omi picks up the towel she gave him, surprised by the message embroidered on it. Meanwhile, at the final match, Ellie struggles to focus, distracted by her argument with Omi. As Ellie ties her shoelaces, she hears the girls cheering Omi's name, and soon she sees him entering the school gym, wearing the towel she gifted him. It turns out that Omi has come to cheer on Ellie and encourage her to give her best in the final. Boosted by his support, Ellie catches up on the score, eventually finishing in second place. Despite this, Ellie feels happy especially as her classmates praise her and thank her for her hard work for their class. Shortly afterward, Ellie finds Omi in his classroom to apologize for yelling at him. She also expresses how sad she felt learning that Omi decided to withdraw from the final match, especially since he always gives his best in every competition. Secretly, Ellie has observed how Omi maintains his physical fitness, particularly caring for his hands. She also knows how hard Omi practices tennis each night until his hands are sore. Because of this, Ellie hopes he won't push himself too hard and will take the time to rest properly. As Ellie turns to leave, Omi suddenly hugs her tightly from behind. Embarrassed, Ellie pushes him away, hiding her face in the towel. Just as Omi is about to persuade her out, they hear footsteps approaching, so he joins Ellie under the towel to hide. In that moment, Omi confesses his feelings to Ellie, who happily accepts his admission since she likes him too. Omi then kisses Ellie and asks her to be his girlfriend. From that point on, Ellie and Omi officially start dating, though they decide to keep their relationship a secret from everyone. Ellie patiently endures seeing Omi keep his distance, as he is always surrounded by girls. Soon after, Leo visits Mr. Shiota's office to turn in his notes and runs into Omi, who inquires about Ellie. As her friend, Leo advises Omi to be considerate and treat Ellie well. After school, Omi waits for Ellie in the bike parking area, offering to walk home together. Omi then invites Ellie to his house since his parents will be home late that evening. Ellie feels excited but nervous as she finds herself alone with Omi in his room. Just as Omi leans in to kiss her, he pauses upon noticing her nervousness, choosing instead to apologize. Ellie, however admits that she's just feeling shy. To reassure him, Ellie stands up to kiss him, though she ends up kissing his neck by accident. In return, Omi playfully kisses her neck, and they share a laugh about it. One day, as Omi heads to school, he runs into his middle school friend, Aoba, who is also a member of the tennis club at their school. The girls with Aoba go wild over Omi and try to approach him, but Omi chooses to walk away. Meanwhile, at school, Ellie is replying to a tweet from an account named Candy58, which comments on how happy she has seemed lately. As Ellie goes to move some items, she trips on her shoelaces and falls. Seeing this, a young man named Kaname quickly steps in to help and notices that Ellie has twisted her ankle. Kaname tries to assist her, but Ellie pushes him away as he unexpectedly removes her shoe. Apologizing, Kaname realizes he may have overstepped. He then shares with Ellie that he has been trying to piece together a puzzle that seems impossible to solve and feels saddened by it. Ellie replies that nobody is made perfect, which is why everyone needs others to complete them. After Ellie leaves, Kaname takes out his phone and finds a message from the account Lovesick Ellie. It turns out Kaname is the person behind the Candy58 account, who has frequently been replying to Lovesick Ellie's tweets. After replying to the tweet, Kaname hears a notification and realizes that Ellie left her phone behind. In that moment, Kaname discovers that the owner of the lovesick Ellie account he's been following all this time is none other than Ellie herself. Soon after, Mr. Shioda enters Ellie's class to recruit members for the Cultural Festival Committee. 
The students nominate Ellie as the class representative because of her impressive performance in the recent sports tournament. Although initially nervous, Ellie agrees to represent the class, especially with the support of her classmates. However, Omi seems a bit sulky upon hearing Ellie has joined the cultural festival committee, knowing this will mean less time together. Omi then asks Ellie to make extra time for him after the festival. Hearing this, Ellie feels both nervous and delighted, thinking Omi might want to spend more intimate time with her. The next day, Kaname reveals to Ellie that he knows her identity as the owner of the Lovesick Ellie account because he is the person behind Candy58. Ellie assumes Kaname might try to blackmail her to keep him quiet. But unexpectedly, Kaname only wishes to be her friend. At that moment, Omi, who happens to be nearby, overhears their conversation. Seeing Omi approaching, Kaname decides to leave and asks Ellie to consider his offer of friendship. Omi suggests that Ellie decline Kaname's request for friendship, but Ellie feels sorry for Kaname, seeing that he is often alone. Omi then shares with Ellie that he'll be competing in an interregional tennis match and promises to win it for her. Hearing this, Ellie is thrilled and promises to come and cheer him on. Additionally, Omi says he'll try to befriend Kaname, so he won't feel lonely anymore. On their day off, Omi accompanies Ellie to the aquarium to meet Kaname. When they arrive, Kaname questions Omi's presence, expecting to spend time alone with Ellie. It becomes clear that Kaname only wanted to be friends with Ellie and rejects Omi's attempt at friendship. When Kaname asks about Ellie and Omi's relationship, Omi intends to reveal he is her boyfriend. However, Ellie quickly responds that Omi is just her friend. Omi looks disappointed, while Kaname leaves bored. Soon after, Ellie apologizes to Omi, explaining that she doesn't want their relationship to be public. But Omi assumes Ellie might have special feelings for Kaname, especially since she seems to understand him better. Ellie denies this and clarifies that she only wants to be friends with Kaname because she knows how it feels to be without friends. She adds that Omi might not understand since he's so popular and constantly surrounded by admirers. Frustrated, Omi suggests they break up. Surprisingly, Ellie agrees, though she's heartbroken because she truly loves Omi. Afterward, Ellie stops writing about her fantasies on her lovesick Ellie account due to her heartbreak. She also becomes busy preparing for the cultural festival, while Omi focuses on training for the interregional tennis match. When some committee members fall ill due to food poisoning, Ellie reluctantly takes on more responsibility than before. Meanwhile, Leo approaches Omi, telling him about the challenges Ellie is facing. Although Omi points out that he's no longer her boyfriend, Leo reminds him that he should still do something for the girl he cares about. As a result, Omi decides to find Ellie in a classroom. But upon arrival, he sees Ellie in conversation with Kaname. Ellie shares that people have often overlooked her, not even noticing her presence. However, everything changed when Omi entered her life. Omi was the first person to truly notice her presence at school, and her world changed instantly because of him. Because of this, she also wants to make a difference, helping those around her, even if her contributions seem small. Upon hearing this, Kaname apologizes to Ellie, saying he never intended to cause any harm to her or Omi. Kaname then encourages Ellie to make amends with Omi because he doesn't want her to feel sad. Ellie replies that Kaname is a dear friend to her. During the times when social media was her only outlet to express her feelings, he was a stranger who truly understood her. Hearing this, Kaname is moved and responds, saying he feels grateful that the person behind Lovesick Ellie is none other than Ellie Ichimura, his classmate. He is also happy to know that the real lovesick Ellie exists in the world and acknowledges him. Meanwhile, Omi, overhearing their conversation, decides not to interrupt and hurries to his match location, determined to keep his promise to Ellie. Over the following hours, Ellie stays busy with her duties as the cultural festival committee head, while Omi advances through each round of the tournament until he reaches the final, where he faces Aoba. Not long after, at school, a few festival committee members complain to Ellie, calling her a useless and ineffective leader. Hearing this, Sarah and Leo stand up for her, urging the others to work harder rather than criticize someone who is doing her best. Soon after, while Ellie is in the storage room, some items suddenly start to fall toward her. Fortunately, 
Omi arrives just in time to shield her. Surprised to see Omi, Ellie asks about his match. Omi proudly shows her a trophy, revealing that he won the final match. Hearing this, Ellie is overjoyed and thanks Omi for reigniting her motivation to do her best. In short, thanks to Ellie and her friend's hard work, the cultural festival goes smoothly and ends in success. Ellie also receives praise and appreciation from her friends for fulfilling her duties so well. Shortly thereafter, Sarah and Leo ask Ellie to go up to the school rooftop to retrieve a folding ladder. However, when she arrives, Ellie finds Omi waiting for her instead. Omi apologizes for everything and shares that he, too, has faced challenges similar to Kaname's. He explains that he has also struggled to make friends, thinking that people wouldn't truly understand him. But everything changed when he met Ellie, who, to his surprise, could understand him. From their first meeting, Omi wanted Ellie to see his true self, so he wouldn't have to pretend. He adds that Ellie has transformed his world, and because of this, he wants to start dating her again. Without hesitation, Ellie, who deeply loves Omi, agrees to be his girlfriend. With their misunderstandings resolved, Omi and Ellie share a kiss under a sky lit with fireworks. The following day, Omi and Ellie walk hand in hand toward school, with people whispering around them. Ellie feels shy about the attention, especially after hearing a few girls comment that she doesn't seem like a fitting match for Omi. However, Omi reassures her, promising to always protect her and urging Ellie not to worry about others' opinions regarding their relationship. Omi says the most important thing to him is that Ellie knows and understands his true self, so he doesn't care what anyone else thinks. Behind them, a few girls are delighted to see Omi and Ellie together, calling them a perfect couple. Meanwhile, Ellie is overjoyed that her fantasies have finally become a reality. Nonetheless, this doesn't stop her from writing new fantasies on her lovesick Ellie account. Fortunately, her boyfriend understands each one and agrees to help make them come true. Moral lesson from the story, claiming someone as your boyfriend on social media is like owning a pet rock. You might think it's real love, but don't be shocked if it doesn't look back.